And thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. As the weather gets warmer, issues surrounding water quality are in the public eye. From algae blooms to beach closings, the challenges of nutrient runoff ending up in our rivers and lakes are well documented. Across the state, one of the main areas of emphasis is reducing phosphorus and other nutrients that come from urban development and from agriculture. UVM Extension is leading many of the research and technical assistance programs on Vermont farms. It's an effort that involves education, technology, and some specialized equipment. Keith Silva introduces us to a new technology for farms that keeps nutrients in the soil and out of our waterways. You're looking at the future of nutrient management and improved water quality in Vermont. You know, if I was a layperson and I wasn't a farmer and I saw it, other than the hose, I might think they were planting something in the field. This is the Grassland Shallow Slot Manure Injection Tool. And in the next few years, it's likely to become the way to spread manure. If you get some decent regrowth, you can still get out there and put on manure without worrying about ruining the crop. At this dairy farm in Bridport, farmers, state officials, and equipment dealers have gathered to watch a demonstration of this new technology. Kirsten Workman is a UVM Extension agronomist. It's injecting liquid dairy manure literally just two inches under the surface um, of, the, of the grass plants. So this does very little disturbance, almost no true disturbance of the soil or the plants. It's just making a slot and then dropping the manure right in that slot. The injector is hooked to a drag line that pumps manure from a nearby pit. 60 cutting blades make a narrow slot in the ground and the manure is injected under the surface. From below or above, it doesn't look or smell like manure is being spread on this field at all. And that's the point. How long have you been using the injection? This was the first time. What do you think so far? Looks good so far. The host of this event is Dan Barnes. He and his family operate the Black and White Base Ranch. He believes this technology has significant potential for protecting natural resources. Yeah, I mean, you look at that field, you, can, you can't see a lot of manure there, which is what we want. We want it down, covered up, and down where the roots are. The plants can use it. Potentially, we're capturing more of the nitrogen. It's not just kind of flying away in the air as we're applying it or before it gets soaked into the soil and attached to a soil molecule or a plant group. That's the big driver for me. Typically, when manure is applied to a hay field, it's spread on top of the soil. When it rains, some of the nutrients in the manure, like phosphorus and nitrogen, can wash off and end up in waterways. The decision to use the injector came out of the research Workman and her colleagues did on phosphorus runoff from hayfields. We realized that this dissolved phosphorus running off the surfaces of hayfields in the summer was a higher risk than we really thought it was. Because hayfields are low erosion, we think of them as being lower risk than an annual crop field. But that's not necessarily always the case. And in Vermont, we have more acres of hay than we have in annual crops by a lot. And so that can be a potentially very large, risky situation. And so we recognized that, identified that, and we started looking into what could be the best technology. This is one of the largest manure injectors on the market and costs around $100,000. UVM Extension received a grant from the Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets to buy it and to subsidize the cost of its operation for two years. Extension contracted with Matthews Trucking a state certified manure applicator to run the injector. Farmers pay $26 per acre to use it on their farm. A practice like this, I think what we see is over the course of about three years, we start to see really rapid adoption. Um, if it works, um, it, it, and once they get all the you know kinks worked out, we start to see pretty quick adoption um, for practices that are working really well like this. Like all the things that we try and do in extension, we're trying to vet that out for the farm before they go ahead and make that purchase on their own. You know, and Many of the farmers and attendants haven't seen this technology used in Vermont. Um, this demonstration has helped Alan Bryson make up his mind. He runs a thousand cow dairy in nearby Ferrisburg. Um, I think it's very likely that I'll have, I'll have one or something very similar for next season. Bryson figured he'd need a smaller injector that would cost about 85000 
at a time when the price being paid to farmers for their milk is the lowest it's been in a decade. Any decision to buy anything has to be worth it. It is a tough year to be a dairy farmer. It's the toughest year for me, I would say, in the last, uh, in the last five years. And, uh, cash flow is tight. Any expenditures that I'm looking at right now have to cash flow. They have to pay for themselves or make money, or else we can't we can't afford to look at them. And and I and I believe I believe that this is one of those that will be a money maker. Yes. Yes. Making sure their farm stays profitable is a farmer's primary concern, but it's not the only thing they have to consider when making decisions. Issues that occur outside the farm gate are also a farmer's business. Well, let's be realistic. There are a lot of factors in every decision we make and, and uh, neighbors, unhappy neighbors can be a real headache at the wrong time. And, you know, if we can do a little thing like this and keep our fences happy, then, then we're good. Be a good neighbor. <laughs> when you do something, say, that's polluting the water, you're using up a resource that can't be easily replenished. So if you can find a way to, to get your work done the way you need it to get done and not pollute the water, isn't that so much better? Um, and then, and then if you can look at it and you can say, hey, I can save some fertilizer because I'm, I'm ejecting this manure in the ground. I'm not losing my uh, nitrogen off into the air. There's another plus, you, you, you're saving money there. And, and then from another standpoint, the good neighbor standpoint, if you can cut down on the smell of that manure, we've got neighbors that live all around us. And I mean, I, I don't take pleasure in stinking up the neighborhood. I mean, if we can, if, it's, it's just, it just looks like a win-win all around. As this technology spreads across Vermont, it's sure to help farmers better their bottom line and improve Vermont's natural resources. In Bridport, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. The new injection system is available to farmers in Addison and surrounding counties thanks to UVM Extension in collaboration with Matthews Trucking of Cornwall and the Agency of Agriculture's Clean Water Fund grants. Joining me now from the agency is Laura DiPietro. Laura is the director of the agency's Water Quality Division. Thanks so much for coming in. Now you've had a chance to see this technology firsthand. What are your impressions as compared to other technologies? Sure, yeah, so this technology is specialized in the sense that it can um, inject into grass. There are definitely injectors in Vermont that are being used on other lands that are not specifically in grass, but this one helps by not tearing it up. If you think about taking um, anything and, and putting it into your grass, ripping the roots and destroying the plant, it's not ideal for having a good harvest. Mm -hmm. And so the naked eye can't see nutrient runoff, so is it possible to quantify how much runoff is reduced by this injector? Well, so the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service has been doing what they call edge of field monitoring. Mm -hmm. So it's research in the, in the fields here in Vermont and there were a number of sites. Um, unfortunately, it didn't specifically test this practice because this is a very new piece of equipment that's just come from overseas and so it's the first one that I'm aware of that's been here in Vermont. But basically, it looked at um, grassland runoff from manure and the soluble portion of phosphorus can be substantially higher than we all thought in the research community. And so this type of equipment will absolutely reduce that by not having that manure available on the surface. Right. Currently, the standard practice for spreading manure in Vermont is surface application. This new technology greatly reduces phosphorus runoff, but what about runoff of other nutrients like nitrogen? Sure. Well, you know, nitrogen is something where you can smell it. Mm -hmm. And if you've followed injection um, on other sites, when you do inject it, that smell does go down. And several of the farmers there discuss that as, you know, a benefit for neighborly relations. But it certainly is, is that's the nitrogen being captured and maintained in the soil, um, which is one of the most beneficial nutrients for crops and one of the most costly fertilizers to buy in. Right. And as a matter of fact, we, you know, keep thinking that this manure is something that farmers are trying to get rid of, but it's not. It's a resource for farmers. Oh, absolutely. And maintaining it, that nitrogen, again, I mean, in these, these economic times, that's a really important piece. Um, and the phosphorus as well. You know, UVM has actually documented there are a number of soils in Vermont that do need this phosphorus 
Um, so keeping both in the soil and protecting them where they're available at the crop root versus at the surface is much more beneficial. Does the agency provide other grant opportunities like the one that's funded this new injector? Yeah, sure. So this new injector came th through our Capital Equipment Assistance Program, um, which that program you know, will run again into the future. Uh, we had 45 different applications funded this year. And um, the next year, one of the things that we'll look at is another program for phosphorus reduction. So, And I'll talk about that a little bit more. But that program is there. And then there's also the um, Clean Water Initiative Program, which is essentially the uh, grant program with our partners, less traditionally with our farmers. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, we're working with UVM Extension in the north to potentially purchase another one of these to be able to be used up in the Lake Carmine watershed. Um, and that's just a way to, to couple the technical assistance directly with that grant. So it provides some technical support to UVM to do that. It sounds like that's pretty key to making this haul work. Farmers really do like working with UVM Extension. They have really good ideas and UVM Extension is able to help them make it happen. Um, so together they're this unbelievable team that can really make some, some new innovation come to Vermont, which is, is really exciting. Tell us about some of the legislative outcomes regarding agriculture. Sure, so I just mentioned that the capital equipment, um, we're going to have a phosphorus removal equipment grant. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be a little bit different than the traditional capital equipment grant. Um, it'll require a 20% cost share from the farmer or industry. Um, there, you know, it's open to not to, to private and um, nonprofit or other organizations, um, which it could go up to 300,000. Um, so it's a significant amount of money to look at phosphorus extraction or reduction or other innovative ideas, um, which I think will pair really well with the, um, the phosphorus initiative that we are doing with the reverse pitch with the governor. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one thing that came out of there. Um, additionally, one of the things for nutrient management is the basis for all of this manure application. Right. The agency of ag is going to be required to start regulating the folks who, as a professional, right nutrient management plans for farmers to ensure that they're meeting the standards and, and um, planning the right way. So that'll be a new change that'll be coming up. Um, and then another area that, that came out of the legislative session is uh, lakes in crisis bill, uh, which is basically, it did declare Lake Carmi a lake in crisis, and it requires the states to write a plan, to implement it, and to enforce where necessary, to make sure that the right practices that are still needed to be done for that watershed are done. And so what are key priorities heading into next year's legislature? Uh, to, to take a breath. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of water quality action in the legislature in the last couple of years, starting in 2015 with Act 64, the Vermont Clean Water Act. Um, it has made a lot of changes for the agricultural community. Uh, we've got new rules, we've got you know, more uh, oversight as far as inspectors on farms and capacity to do enforcement. And I think all of that is actually working really well. Um, to see more change, I think, adds more complication into trying to understand what you're supposed to do. So we're hopeful we can convince the legislators to see and watch what they've created in these last couple of years really play out and support it. So kind of take a break on the regulations and just sort of sit back and see how things Things are going now with the new regulations in place. Absolutely, because at this point, you know, we revised the RAPs, which are the rules that are mm -hmm. required for all farms. Um, in 2016, they were finalized. We're in the middle of doing it again now, and we have to do it again immediately after that because of this new nutrient management piece. So we are continually, within three years, have been changing a rule every year, and I think that that is a real challenge to people who are in the regulated community. Yeah, how has that been going? Uh, the RAPs are going really good. When I look and you know, I think of other states and other plans that people are trying to do to work on water quality, and you look at farms in Vermont, and you see videos like this, this is common practice in Vermont, is to see farmers this eager in adopting practices, even in some of these tough times. And I think that's special. I don't see that that is as widespread of a community social move that we have here. And I think, you know, if we're going to be in a pl in order to make changes in water quality, you've got to change people and behaviors. We all do. And I think the ag community is really doing that. And as much as the regulations can be tough, they are up for the challenge and have been doing the work, which is great. And it's in situations like in the video, seeing is believing for these farmers to see this equipment in action and these and these. Um, requirements in action. 
Yeah, yeah. No, the, the the work that UVM does and all the other partners to do the demonstrations, um, you'll notice a lot. It's the farms wanting to get this stuff going, right. and so they open their doors, bring UVM in, and they're able to put this together and show other neighboring farmers. Uh, they certainly, it's a close knit community, and they mm -hmm. each know what the, each other are doing and learning from each other at a really rapid pace. Mm -hmm. And also, too, they're learning that some of these things, even though it might be an expensive change to make can save them money down the road. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you look around the state of Vermont, think about cover cropping and no-till. Those are two practices in particular. So cover cropping is having a green field in the middle of winter, mm -hmm. and no-till is not plowing every year, um, trying to preserve the soil and plant right into the, the previous soil without a significant amount of disturbance, um, which equipment like this does help. That's why injectors are great, because you don't have to fully plow. You can still get the nutrients in. But those practices didn't really exist in a widespread way at all, and, and especially in some of the areas with the heavier clays. Right. And you're seeing that now. Now, much more widely adopted and especially you know adopted by the older generation as the new generation has come in so there's just this whole shift that's happening and it's it's all good stuff that is documented to be beneficial for water quality well, Laura thanks so much for joining us today no problem thanks that's our program for today thanks for joining us I'm Judy Simpson I'll see you again next time on across the fence